Hello, everyone. A warm welcome to all of you joining us today for this exciting webinar. I'm Erin Canto, the Refroad Foundation's Digital Community Officer, and I'm thrilled to be your host for this session. It is an absolute pleasure to have the opportunity to talk about how we are making waves in the diving industry through the impact of online communities in empowering sustainability in their businesses. We will be joined by a pool of experts during our panel discussion to talk about opportunities and challenges of sustainability in the diving industry. So for today's webinar, it is a collaboration with PADI and a celebration for World Oceans Day last June 8th with the theme, Planet Oceans, Tides Are Changing. The Reef Road Foundation is changing the tide in a different direction by utilizing online communities, which is the Greenfins Community Forum, to make an impact in the diving industry by making resources and re reliable industry experts more accessible to Greenfins members. We will be learning more about Greenfins Hub and the Community Forum in a bit. But joining us today as moderator is the Reef Road Foundation's Executive Director, Chloe Harvey. Hey, Erin. Hi, Chloe. Nice to see you here. <laughs> <laughs> and you. <laughs> How how's your your uh you're tuning in or you're you're joining us today from the UK? How is That's the right. weather? It's how actually weather? sunny, sunny and warm. Unusually, not as warm as it is for you in the Philippines, but yeah, <laughs> lovely, beautiful British summer today. Ah, uh, that's nice. That's great to hear. And. Actually, Chloe, it is truly exciting to facilitate with you these meaningful conversations that we're going to have today and help us explore the depths of sustainability with our trusted experts. But before that, for those who might not be familiar with the Refroad Foundation and the Greenfins Initiative, um, could you please give us a brief overview of the work that we do? Yeah, sure. I'd be pleased to. Um, so the Reef Oil Foundation is a UK charity and as a leader in marine tourism sustainability, we aim to make sustainable diving and snorkeling the social norm, uh, the social norm globally. And our flagship program is called Greenfins, which is implemented in partnership with the UN Environment Programme. And we provide low cost practical solutions to businesses, environmental challenges and offer education and a cap capacity building to empower environmental champions to protect our reefs globally through that program. So as Erin said, my name's Chloe Harvey and I'm the Executive Director of Reef World. And alongside a small and dedicated team, I've been running Greenfins globally since 2008. Um, I'm an avid scuba diver and a passionate marine scientist. And I combine these two loves to drive lasting systemic change in the marine tourism industry globally with Greenfins. Yes, lovely. And um, I'm so lucky to join the team last year. <laughs> so, We're so lucky to have you. Uh -huh. But also, thank you, Chloe. And as Chloe said, the Greenfins Hub is a global platform where, where Greenfins members from all over the world, both certified and digital, will be managed. The online platform uh, provides an easy access to a library of solutions, track and log their sustainable action plans, and connect to other members and industry trusted experts through the community forum. Not only that, the community will be able to connect to all Greenfins members all over the world where you are, and everyone in the community is welcome and encouraged to share their experiences, expertise, best practices in their businesses. And to give us a brief overview of the membership, let's watch the short video. Green Fins is the world's first independent certificate to stop the environmental impact from marine-based tourism. Implemented by the Reef World Foundation in partnership with the UN Environment Programme, predominantly through its membership, which is available globally. Tourists are demanding more sustainable options. They are willing to pay more for operations that are aligned to their values on sustainability and preservation of our wonderful ocean ecosystems. They want to learn more about the environment and how to be involved in meaningful conservation. They want to book sustainable holidays with confidence. Greenfins provides the only internationally recognized environmental standards 
for the diving and snorkeling activities. Start your sustainability journey with green fins in these simple steps. For certified membership, sign up on the Green Fins Hub. Receive in-person assessment. Consult and review your sustainable action plan with Green Fins Assessors. Track your progress. Participate in the Green Fins Community Forum. For digital membership, sign up on the Green Fins Hub. Complete self-evaluation. Build your sustainable action plan, which is tailored to you and your operation, achievable, practical, and cost-effective. Track your progress. Participate in the Green Fins Community Forum. What do you get as a member? Guidance to achieve your sustainability goals. Endorsement from UNEP, ReefWorld, and other partners. Support from the Green Fins Global Community. Promotion on the Green Fins website and partner booking platforms. Access to new customers. And many more. With Green Fins, you will embrace and enjoy the benefits of adopting ocean conscious business practices, sustaining both your business and ocean health. Sign up today. All right. Oh my gosh, Chloe, that was awesome. Big shout out to our comms team for making that great video. But also, I can see from the comments that there are several um, uh, Green Fins uh, fans or members tuning in today. So big shout out to Mohamed Nassem from Maldives. Thank you for tuning in. Also, Ornella Detail from Egypt. And Vishal Bhatt from India, thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're a certified or digital Greenfins member, please do type in the comment box below what's your um, business name or operation name and where you're from. We would like to see uh, which members are tuning in today. So, um, so currently, Chloe, we have 128 active digital members and 100 and 44 active certified members and 273 operators around the world are working towards Greenfin's membership and improve, improving their sustainability. So it is really great to see that the Greenfin's community forum is gaining momentum. We currently have, we launched the Greenfin's community forum last September and we have lots of discussion threads from members who are sharing their best practices in minim minimizing plastic waste in their operations, also sharing reef monitoring efforts, also their challenges in minimizing chemical discharges. And we even did our first community-led event last June 8th, where uh, like lots of our members participated in the first Green Fins Global Cleanup event. Amazing. That was really, really cool to see that unfold as a first community-led event. Mm -hmm. And I'm also learning loads from the community as well. There's loads of solutions specifically more recently around chemical replacements to chemical, harmful chemical products, which I never knew anything about. And this is great for us to learn because we can then start sharing that among the network outside of the community forum as well. But inside the community forum is where it's all happening. I agree with you. And it is a learning process every day. We learn something new. We learn like different best practices all over the world. And it's truly, it's truly a space where everyone grows. No one, no one is uh, above the other. We're all uh, learning together to drive sustainability in our operations. So we are so privileged to have an exceptional panel of experts joining us today. And each panelist brings a perspective and extensive knowledge in the diving industry. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our panelists that will be joining us today. First up is our uh, Emma Hetherington, Paddy's Corporate Social Responsibility Specialist based in Bristol, UK. At Paddy, Emma's objective is to advance Paddy's pillars of change, which is ocean conservation, working closely with Paddy Aware Foundation, Dive Industry Sustainability, 
people and humanity, which uh, she is nurturing inclusivity and supporting local communities through the healing power of the ocean. So uh, we will see uh, Emma later on. Um, the next panelist will be Dr. Alex Broski, the founder and president of Ocean Education International LLC. It is a consulting firm in specializing marine environmental conservation and sustainable tourism. He has been working with companies in the private sector and government agencies and non-governmental organizations. He creates innovative marine conservation programs through responsible tourism and citizen science initiatives. Our third panelist is joining us right now from Bangkok, which is Ms. Margarita Cavalia, currently leads COPS's initiative in the protection and management of marine and coastal ecosystem in East Asian seas. She is working for the coordin coordinating body on the, East, on, on the seas of East Asia of the United Nations Environment Program. COPS is an intergovernmental mechanism with nine countries around East Asian seas and is one of the 18 regional seas. Next up is an experienced technical diver and instructor trainer having studied with some of the world's best and has worked as a full-time scuba diving instructor since 1999. Matt Reed is a technical diving instructor since 2002 and um, in some enviable locations, including the Red Sea, Belize, Dominican Republic, Palau, and of course, the UK. Uh, he is now based in the Philippines since 2003, and Matt has made this country his full-time home and enjoys the warm climate. He is currently the founder of Evolution Diving in Malapascua, a Greenfin Certified Gold Member, and the Greenfins Award 2023 winner. Last but not the least, coming from United Arab Emirates, our final panelist is Kathleen Russell. She has been a body course director since 2011 and teaching since 1996. Originally from Canada, now living in UAE, she has founded Al Mahara Diving Center, a Paddy Eco 5 star, 5 star IDC Center in 2010. Their focus is on marine conservation, youth development, and community research outreach. They have been conducting dive against debris, reef check surveys, as well as training reef check eco divers. And they are also heavily involved in mangrove and coral restoration programs. Now, I'm so excited to bring all of our panelists in the screen. So um, the panel discussion is open to your questions. Dear viewers, if you have questions or reactions, Hello, everybody. Wait, you again. <laughs> All right. So, how is everybody feeling today, tonight? Um, I know everyone. Like we're we're in different and multiple time zones right now so super super grateful for those who are waking up early and staying late at night tonight to join us in this webinar okay um so chloe um we're so happy to have such a fantastic uh panel and i know the audience is eager to hear from you so currently the Greenfins Community Forum is buzzing with hot topics and interesting discussions these past few months, which is why we have invited our esteemed panelists to share with us on how the Community Forum is empowering sustainability in the diving industry. So um, I know, Dr. Alex, you are um, tuning in from Miami right now, which part of the U.S.? Uh, a little bit north of Miami, uh, yes, indeed. Another beautiful, beastly hot floor today. Thank you so much for waking up early <laughs> to join us today. Um, Kathleen, uh, yes. you are now in UAE. Yes, I'm oh. in sunny, warm Abu Dhabi. Um, it's 3 p.m., so thank you for the, the lovely time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you, won, you won the bonus time, didn't you? <laughs> um, and of yes. course, Emma, mm -hmm. you're tuning in from the UK right now. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm in Bristol with Chloe, where it's actually sunny. For yeah. once, <laughs> so we've had a bit of a heat wave. It's been sunny for a few weeks now, so I think we're all getting used to it. Yeah, 
<laughs> we're English. So, so we're uh, looking forward to some rain, I think, and then we'll regret when the summer's over. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then Margarita from Bangkok. Hi, Erin. Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm in Bangkok right now. Uh, almost past six. Still very sunny. <laughs> That's nice. Of course, Matt, um, from the Philippines. <laughs> so, sunny all year round. There's just two um, weather in the Philippines. just hot and hotter. So, <laughs> so Matt, yeah. it sounds like yeah. you've, got, you've got some dogs in the background there, Matt. Oh, yeah, a lot. Sorry about that. No, 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 don't be sorry. <laughs> I can hear them wanting to join in. Come join the discussion. <laughs> Sometimes they do kind of try and get in the shot, actually, as well, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly appear out of the background. <laughs> uh, that, that will be our sixth panelist. <laughs> yeah. All right, but before we jump right into the discussion, we'd like to know each one of you first, like a eh, small getting to know. So we'd like to ask, each one of you, if you can share with us and our viewers, what's your favorite diving and snorkeling location or destination in the world? So, Chloe, would you like to go first? <laughs> oh, I wasn't prepared. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no. I, I, I came up with a question, but I didn't think of the answer. <laughs> Um, I think I'm going to have to go with Scapa Flow in Scotland um, as a diving destination. Um, there's obviously some beautiful tropical locations we can go to, but as a diving destination, Scapa Flow. Oh, sounds lovely. Um, I'll go next. Uh, I haven't dived in a lot of locations yet. I just recently got back to diving, but for snorkeling, it's definitely Danhugan Island. It's a small protected area here in the Philippines, just a three-hour drive away from my home. But for diving, um, probably Dawin. I had a really pleasant time in Dumaguete uh, with the team diving and uh, getting back to the water again with a tank on and not holding my breath. So <laughs> the team has been helping me get back onto diving. How about you, Matt? Behind me, I guess right, I've chose to set up my business resort here on, on Malapascua Island. And uh, the reason is because I think it's excellent. Um, Thresher Sharks, anybody? Um, recently, the Thresher Sharks that are making Malapascua famous moved from where they've been for you know the last 20 years or so for diving to a slightly different shoal. And it made it even better. The shoal is a bit shallower. Um, and there's more sharks in a smaller location. Uh, and I honestly think that site is probably now one of the top 10 in the world right now. It's so good. Uh, so just a little, a little bit of a plug, but it's an amazing dive uh, there with the thresh sharks. So really, really good. Having been lucky enough to experience it, I completely concur. Oh, I haven't been diving with thresh yeah. sharks yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's on my list. How, uh, Dr. Alex, what's your favorite um, diving or snorkeling destination? Uh, I've been asked that question many times, and uh, frankly, I have to go back to my very first uh, scuba dive on a coral reef in uh, August of 1966 on Sombrero Reef in Florida Keys. Uh, and I say that because it's literally the experience that, that defined my life for most uh, for, the, for the rest of it. Uh, and because it truly was, a, 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 and people find this hard to believe, it was comparable to any reef I've ever been on in my life. Uh, but because of the impact it had on a 16-year-old kid, I, I have to say that that morning in August was my favorite, uh, my, oh. my favorite time. Oh, I can feel it. <laughs> uh, I hope hope you can visit one day. <laughs> um, What's the best dive spot in UAE, Kathleen? You're the best person to ask. <laughs> um, well, we are situated in the Arabian Gulf. Um, it's one of the probably harshest uh, marine environment that we have, yet we still have corals and marine life. And so it is a, a good focus for us. And also we don't have to jump on an airplane. Um, but I guess my favorite is we are only four hours away to the Maldives. Oh. <laughs> Um, just because the, the corals are amazing there. and um, But saying that, our next door neighbor in Oman, east of the UAE, have beautiful corals. Um, and we have 
a lot of marine life as well too. So again, within this driving distance, um, I would have to say being here for over two decades, we've really um, been inspired by just along the coastline of the, the East Coast in the UAE as well too. So yeah, that's us. Oh, that sounds so lovely, just a four hour drive away <laughs> and then you're there. <laughs> uh, that's on my bucket list too. <laughs> How about you, Emma? <laughs> Um, I like, I've got a soft spot for Dahab, the, the reefs around there are so colorful and all the, the tiny orange fish all around like these big coral mounds are really beautiful. Um, but I think also Cornwall has to go on the list. It's one that I've done less exploration in, lots more snorkeling than diving. Um, but I'm looking forward to doing more. I'm pregnant right now, so this whole summer season is like scuba diving's off the card. So I've been jumping in with the <laughs> with the snorkel, but the wetsuit won't really fit around my bump right now. So it's been really short <laughs> snorkels in in English water. So next season, that's, that's my hope uh, to explore more. Uh, yeah, it'd be the baby. <laughs> 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 yeah, get them in as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Margarita, what's your favorite diving? Well, my favorite is uh, in Coron, in Palawan, the Philippines. Uh, mm. It's mostly wreck diving from the Japanese ships that were bombed there. But uh, there are some coral reefs going on around this. Um, the 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 wrecks. It's amazing because you know you go through some some of the ships are very very small so you go through a very small area passageway and you squeeze your in, way in and then some are just massive you cannot touch any of the walls and it's just pitch black all over but uh in terms of reefs i think sikihor is also very nice it has a lot of turtles bigger than we they're just massive uh sea turtles all around yeah more fun in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, very, yeah and, and, and I vouch for Coron as well. It's a free divers playground, like for adventure seekers. But thank you everyone for um, sharing your diving destinations. And I know me um, wishing we could all visit all those places. But uh, we have some diving to do in a different direction. So diving into our panel discussion, as we go through the questions, if any of the panelists would like to chime in, please feel free. You're also going to open the floor to questions at the end of our discussion. So everyone out there who's tuning in our Facebook pages and LinkedIn pages, please go ahead and ask your question in the chat box. And uh, we will try to answer them with the time that we have. So panelists are also welcome. If you would like to ask a question to your fellow fellow panelists during the discussion, please feel free to do so. So, Chloe, shall we dive right in? Let's go for it. So, Emma, you're up first. So, just a reminder, Emma is um, a corporate social responsibility specialist at Paddy, um, training agency and network of professional divers around the world. Um, and so, Emma, I wanted to ask you a little bit about EcoCenter, which is the designation that we've worked together on um, in partnership with ReefWorld um, on, on launching recently. And I wanted to know, how is the community forum helping the Paddy EcoCenters in achieving their sustainability? sustainability goals. Thanks. Yeah, EcoCenter is really exciting that we've got here. I know we, we've been working on this for a couple of years and it's really nice to see like Kathleen and Matt, you guys are both on the EcoCenter train. So nice that you guys are here too. I think um, for Greenfin's membership, it's such a massive component of EcoCenter. It's like the main vehicle that we use to assess the sustainability of the operations at the dive center. We're recognizing that Paddy isn't um, an expert in sustainable operations of marine tourism operators. That's what Reef World is doing fantastically with Greenfin's initiative. So um, we're really leaning on you guys for that so having the self-assessment is really important to help people understand where they're at and having the action plan and be able to log your progress is obviously really important too but having the community forum aspect i think brings it to a whole new level and allows people to connect peer-to-peer -peer between different dive centers that have those same eco-minded ideas all around the world that previously probably wasn't possible to my knowledge that 
platform didn't exist. So you'd have to go places like Demo, or ADEX or Boot or other events to try and connect with people. And even then trying to figure out who it is that maybe is going to share the same values as you um, in terms of a sustainable business plan um, was a bit of a challenge. So that's the, the main thing I think is really helping uh, dive centers to connect with each other with like-minded professionals and get the whole of the um, dive business so it's not just the owner it's all of the staff can join the community forum and really help establish this culture of sustainability and get this discussion going with the whole team and then i think for me like lurking around there and being a bit involved is the ability to share what's working and learn from each other so there's a great conversation going on there about wetsuit recycling um, and how people are dealing with their leftover wetsuits and there was the some ideas like we're making bags out of them there's a company in the US that's turning them into yoga mats someone in Australia is creating sending them off and they're creating roads out of recycled wetsuit material but there was one suggestion from a dive center in the northeast of England who said that they're sending their wetsuits to the local seal sanctuary and they use them in some way um, to support the baby seals and then there was a guy in Florida that was like, oh, that's a great idea. I should get in touch with my local turtle sanctuary. And it turns out that they like, are in real need of this kind of thing. So now he's got this new avenue to get rid of all of his work suits supporting the local turtles. So it's really cool to see um, people learning from each other all around the world in a way that before the community forum was a thing, realistically is not going to happen. How, how are those two people going to have that conversation? So. Um, that's wicked and then that final element of not necessarily sharing solutions yet but just raising issues like how are people dealing with the with like tricky topics like ideas for replacing night truck stickers is a common challenge and i don't know if a, a specific solution has been found yet but just to have a place that those sort of discussions could start and evolve in in, in a forward motion is um completely new and really really valuable so that's where i'd say it brings value that's great and thank you for pulling out some really awesome examples as, as well of how the conversations have gone in in the community forum and i think that's exactly you've hit the nail on the head in terms of it can be quite daunting i think as a dive center owner or manager to really know where to start and you know these things are happening and you know they're probably not the right thing for the environment but until you know what a practical cost sensitive solution is then you you can't find a way you know running a dive business is, is one of the busiest jobs out there i think so having somewhere where you can go and just shoot out what your problems are and then come back with some of these solutions and you just come up with some really lovely ones um i hadn't seen the one about the um seal sanctuary so that's absolutely fantastic um yeah so so I think that's exactly it, trying to bring the network together. And I like the fact also, thank you for pointing to the dive shows because the Reefor Foundation does run a number of sustainable diving events at the main dive shows around the world. Get in contact if you want to know more. Um, but that is actually where the community forum was born from. So these conversations that we were having at the dive shows um, where we bring together huge groups of diving professionals and all the different businesses that support the mighty diving industry. And then at the end of these conversations, people would say, well, where can we go to continue these conversations? And this is where really the community forum has been born from to continue those conversations in a way that's much more accessible, low carbon footprint. We can all access it wherever we are in the world. So yeah, thank you for, for spotlighting some of those points there, Emma, really appreciate it. And um, I have one more question for you. So you talked really nicely about the, how the dive centers are using or the diving industry is using the community forum to troubleshoot some of their daily challenges. Um, from Paddy's perspective, as one of our key, the Reef World Foundation, Reef World Foundation's key corporate partners, um, and one that we're really proud of, we've had a huge impact together over the years. Um, I'd like to know a bit more about how Paddy, as an entity, as a training agency, can use the forum. Um, I think it's been really helpful for us to identify all of these eco champions out there and it's been a real learning process with the launch of eco center um, we have this fantastic global network of regional managers who are out there all the time and they know everyone and they kind of can feed different stories back like this is going on um, but i know me based in bristol i'm not 
everywhere around the world so I don't know everything that's going on all the time and having the forum and being able to see who's on there and and read everyone's success stories and different things that they're doing and is is highlighted a lot more centers and individuals that are really killing it in their own area mm -hmm. and that's meant that we can pick out those stories highlight them and tell those uh examples like the reason i could pull out those examples about the forum is because they're all stuff that we've put into a recent paddy blog and promoted with mm -hmm. the the paddy global network to try and you know inspire people that aren't already on the forum to perhaps follow suit or get involved in the forum become greens friends members and like start that journey and start thinking about those kinds of things um, and it's it's even wider than that because there was a great discussion about Women's Dive Day, which is coming up really soon, and people sharing different ideas. Um, I think you are on there, Kathleen. I know you've got something exciting coming up, um, and the dis the discussion evolved into things like we should have other days, like Paddy should organise a a youth diving day or a family diving day, and these are things that um, are great ideas, and so it's feeding that back into paddy and and kind of it's really it's really helping us like connect more with our network even in a whole new way and receive new ideas and be kind of inspired by the community and led by the community rather than it kind of being more of a one-sided thing historically brilliant and talking about people killing it you are killing it over at paddy as well so uh, well done <laughs> keep on, keep on pushing you. those those stories out there because this is how we we make a change um great thank you very much emma and um, and just as a reminder the reform foundation is a neutral um entity and Greenfins is a neutral platform and initiative and we work with all different parts of the dive industry and um, so head into the forum if you want to see what other trusted experts you can have a chat with but emma is one of our trusted experts um, so so I'm going to hand over to Erin now to ask some questions to one of our dive centers. Yes, um, uh, one of our most active digital members right now in the community forum is Kathleen. Um, she's, she's just been a superstar in the community forum. And um, I would like to ask you, Kathleen, how do digital members as as you benefit from connecting and engaging with other like-minded indiv individuals in the community forum? <laughs> Um, well, first of all, thank you for having us here, and it, it's such an honor to actually be with you because just so in a short period of time, um, we've connected like globally with other dive centers, and this is phenomenal because I've been in the diving industry for a long time, and um, this is the first time really to, to have honest and open discussions about what, like Emma said, like some of the solutions and things like that. Um, I would say connecting and engaging with other like-minded um, sort of individuals and, and dive centers, I'd say um, there's kind of like five benefits or high highlights that I want to focus on. And one of them um, really importantly is that knowledge sharing uh, where um, Emma highlighted and, and Chloe highlighted that, you know, we can share idea, exchange ideas, best practices, um, and also innovative solutions. Uh, there is a bunch of videos, um, dust caps, for example, that was really cool uh, because, you know, every, a lot of people use dust, uh, uh, masking tapes was a big one. And so we're looking at how, you know, and then this was the video that I shared with our team and now everybody's on board to, to make this happen as well too. Um, and so I think collective wisdom it allows us to learn from each other's experiences as well um, and gain insights and and this is how we can apply it to you know our operations if if, if we can um, another one of course is networking um, and we can connect to other like dive professionals and organizations there is a lot of like uh, links and uh, sites that other people share and i think this is great because it also leads to collaboration um, uh, Emma mentioned about Women's Dive Day for Patty. So there's another uh, Greenfin digital member. Her name is also Chloe, Chloe Blue. And so together we're we're putting together. We're both female-owned dive centers, and so we we're collectively putting together a uh, sort of reef check and dive against debris dive um, dive day on the 16th. So um, so we're getting we're inviting all the women. So it didn't, doesn't matter if it's from our dive center or from her dive center is just a community-based um, event. So that was really good. I guess the third highlight would be um, there's a sense of belonging 
with like-minded people that share like um, these strong values. That's really important, especially we're in the decade of um, ecological restoration, and uh, this is the UN uh, Ocean Decade. So we do need to, you know, walk the walk. It's not just about talking and and you know, um, kind of doing that greenwashing, but really taking active measures as dive centers. Um, and then as a platform, raising awareness. And one of the examples that was really um, nice is that we actually, when we were diving in the East Coast, noticed there was some um, sea, the long spine sea urchin die off. And then other community members from Jordan and from other places also sort of uh, showed that they had similar uh, situations going on. So maybe this is something that is a global, uh, not just a regional or not just a located, like a specific location. Um, and so we can share that awareness and maybe find out what is, what's happening and um, what, what were some of the concerns and things that we can all do about it as well too. Um, I like to call this like a, a collective advocacy as well too, when we do raise awareness of, um, of um, I guess, these, these um, situations. And then the last thing which we really enjoy, I guess, as a digital member is the resources. All the how-to videos that are on there in the solutions library. Um, as well as uh, other members. So one of the things that I learned, was it from Chloe, the eco, eco egg? I think it was the eco egg that she mentioned. So um, being in this part of the region, we don't always get like those types of shares. So, you know, being able to reduce like laundry detergent, uh, plastic bottles is a big thing. Um, so the chemical, um, I guess, the uh, reducing chemical um, um, solutions is something that we all want to do as part of our action plan, but how to is really important for us. So yeah, those are some of the R highlights. Is it uh, Oh, that's that's really great to hear, uh, Kathleen. We're uh, working so hard to make the community forum a safe space for diving centers to just collaborate and speak their minds out without any judgment or uh, you know to feel bad or something like that. So it's really great to hear that you find uh, an online home or a, an access uh, home to where you can connect with members and you know have the resources just one click away so for those who didn't, yeah for first for for everyone tuning in um the green fins uh green fins is has lots of materials available for everyone on our um website greenfins.net all of the materials that are free to download please use it please reproduce it as many as you want so thank you kathleen and super super appreciate your active uh participation in the community forum Okay. One last thing. Um, okay. One last thing. There are discussions in the forum that are there discussions in the community forum that help you with your current challenges. And if yes, uh, can you please give us an example? Um, yes, there is uh, one, and that's the the chemical one. The um, how we can achieve minimum chemical, and it's going to be a I think an ongoing discussion of uh, minimum chemical discharge. Uh, a lot of people use a lot of dental, you know, in the diving industry because sanitation is very important in our, our dive industry. Um, so I, I believe there is like at least, uh, Chloe shared three different types of resources in that discussion. Um, and then other people kind of uh, talked about um, various uh, things. So one of the, I guess, ideas we're looking at is how we can clean and still be green. So a lot of people, uh, some members mentioned about uh, vinegar, lemon, <laughs> um, and we use baking uh, soda as well. And we do this at home. So as I guess as a member and as an inv individual, we need to practice what we preach. So that's really important. So we're going to be looking at, at these type of, um, I guess, aspects of, and including them in the dive, you know, within our dive operations because wetsuit cleaning, uh, regulator cleaning um, are, are really important. Yeah. So if we can mm -hmm. do things like that, sunscreen, I understand, and there's, those are products, but things that we can do on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis is, is really important. And I'm looking forward to even more ideas. And I think we've got a huge community out there that can share what they're doing as well too. Yes. <laughs> and actually we came up with, uh, we were, um, the whole uh, topic of the achieving chemical discharge because it was a result of the past year that uh, lots of um, 
diving operators are struggling with the COC9, which is achieving minimum chemical discharge. So we were gathering uh, in the community firm insights on how we can collectively uh, help you with uh, the chemical discharges and come up with materials that is going to be helpful to everyone to use in the future. Yep, good. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Chloe. Yep. To me again. Okay, <laughs> great. So I've got the pleasure of um, questioning another one of our trusted experts, Margarita. Um, so Margarita was working at COPSI, the coordinating body in the seas of East Asia. And uh, this is particularly uh, meaningful because Greenfins is a United Nations Environment Programme initiative, and it was actually developed and piloted in the COPSI region. Um, so currently you're heading up the coral reef work for COPSI, which just seems like the most almighty mighty task, considering how many coral reef countries you have in your area. Um, but what plans are there to strengthen the regional Greenfins network? Um, and why do you think Greenfins is so important for the COPSI countries? Uh, thank you, Chloe. So I guess just a brief background of what COPSI is to understand better how we uh, play into this context. So COPSI is one of the 18 regional seas program. So we are the uh, regional seas for the East Asian seas composed of nine countries hosted by UN Environment Program in our Bangkok office. So COPSI is governed by the intergovernmental meeting composed of national focal points of these countries. So we are led by governments, basically, of the nine participating countries. So in the last intergovernmental meeting, which is the decision-making effort as well, in October, COPSI proposed the Marine and Coastal Ecosystems Framework, which guides our work on ecosystems and biodiversity, also in line with the recently approved Kunming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. So after a series of consultations, the MCE framework was adopted in April 2023, the, this year, just in April. So this framework provides us basically the go signal to implement projects and initiatives related to spatial planning, marine protected areas, OECMs, and habitat conservation and restoration, which of course includes coral reefs and a specific section on green fins. Um, these are all implemented under an overarching theme of blue economy to ensure inclusive and participative efforts benefiting both people and the blue environment. Green Fins, as you mentioned, is one of our earliest projects and our foray into coral reefs in our history. As supported by the framework, we are now able to concretely pursue initiatives related to Green Fins. But while not yet um, in some of our pipeline plans, we may include uh, regional guidance on coral reef tourism. So not only will we support be supporting green fins and policy level in one country, we can provide support in other nine, in the nine countries providing so, um, guidelines on how to do this at the national level, if not at the local level. Um, we can also provide a regional forum for green fins members to meet up in the region. Um, alongside relevant ministries like the Ministry of Environment, Oceans, Tourism, so they can see how green fins is being done, demonstration and all these things. So we, it can support policy development and increase uptake of green fins at the national level. So for many countries in the region, as you know, tourism is one of the highest economic source uh, for this. So green fins is important for us and in the region because we know that this area has the highest biodiversity on coral reefs as well. Uh, with the 30 by 30 target of the GVF I mentioned earlier, expanding protection beyond marine protected areas through the recognition of other um, effective conservation measures, which can include tourism areas that are not within an MPA. Um, having Green Fins members, accredited dive operators supporting protection in these OECMs, may lead towards achieving this high ambition of 30 by 30 target. So as dive tourism is expanding, we need better protocols on how to do diving sustainably. And the Greenfins effort creates the benchmark for this one. And beyond uh, this diving industry, uh, recently we are looking at how to partner with Greenfins members and um, organizations in retrieval of ghost gear that are trapped in coral reefs. So just beyond Pro, uh, protocols on how to do diving sustainably. We are also expanding our reach to potentially increasing efforts in um, marine, marine pollution as well. 
Amazing. Yes. And we're very happy to be working with you on the Ghost Gear project as well. And we'll be releasing, um, the, well, I think we are releasing the guidelines out. And um, there's some really, really exciting guidelines coming from that project. So um, thank you very much. Um, loads going on and loads of connections that can be had there as well. And um, we've got some exciting proposals in the pipeline with Cobsey as well, which we're, we're really hoping will be successful because we're going to be diving deeper into the, the financial side. So what, what does it mean to be a Greenfins dive operator in terms of finances and the social impacts as well, um, which we're really hoping will, will be yes. successful. So watch this space. <laughs> and we're Hopefully. getting loads of questions from our audience just to remind mind everyone we will come back to these we're going to wait until the question and answer session we're just going to each ask each of our panelists a couple of questions then we're going to have a section where we're going to go back to these questions so do keep them coming lots and lots coming through really exciting ones um so back to margarita um again just to mention trusted expert in the community forum so anyone who wants to ask any more questions to margarita can reach out to her through the community forum after this um so how might an entity like cobsey so as a as a conservation body really um, in terms of the impact that's going to be had from it. Um, and we're looking to work with more conservation bodies around the world, um, governmental, intergovernmental, non-governmental, and pulling them into the community forum to enrich the conversations that are being had. But from COPSI's perspective, um, how might you use the forum? Uh, I think... Um, this allows the internet, you know, being able to access online communities and community of practice such as this have definitely expanded our ability to learn uh, from others, especially those from the ground. So even without COBSI or UNEP going to countries, communities spending money on this, we can learn from best practices done around the region just from this forum. So Erin and Kathleen earlier mentioned several best practices that we can look into and potentially build up uh, into some kind of project or apply in the other regions. So for GovC being part of this forum, allow us to learn what is happening on the ground and best practices, local innovations that we might not have heard of and potentially bring this into the bigger picture. Apart from this, this also allows us to learn about challenges. You know, So apart from good practice, what are the gaps that still have not been addressed, especially with local communities, they know what's happening there. And sometimes it takes a while for big NGOs to see what is there. So they can just give it that kind of information through this forum. Yes, awesome. That's great. Thank you. And so I mentioned that we want to encourage um, more conservation organizations into the forum. Um, we're going to be filtering people in over, like like we said, the forum's still very new mm -hmm. and it's um, becoming active much quicker than we were ever anticipating. And we want to filter more conservation experts into the forum. Um, but what can we do to encourage them to get involved, Margarita? Mm. I, I think for me, the easiest way is to just approach them <laughs> uh, and demonstrate, share stories of the Green Fins impact. Uh, with COVC, we can also extend our network. I mentioned earlier, we're just one of the 18 regional seas and seven of which are administered by UNEP itself. So I'm not sure where um, Green Fins has partnership with the regional sea itself again. So even without the, uh, we can use the regional sea's bodies to expand our work and participation. So with GovC, we have regular um, meeting with the other regional seas where we share best practices in our region so that other regions can adopt this. So mm -hmm. with this way, uh, we are expanding also Greenfin's efforts to them and hopefully they can pick this up and also apply to this forum and work with uh, referred on this. Yeah, well, everyone's welcome. And um, anyone out there, the, the community forum is accessible um, through Greenfins membership. So but by, when you become a Greenfins member, you then can access the community forum and all of all of the dive staff that are at each of the Greenfins members can access the forum. Um, but if you have a specific conservation focus or industry focus and you're not working at a dive center, then put yourself forward as a trusted expert. We'd, we'd really like to have more voices in, in the forum. So um, yeah, anyway. We're moving on because we've got so many questions coming through. So I'm going to hand back over to Erin. Thank you very much, Margarita. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Margarita. And uh, speaking of which, uh, Greenfins member, we, we have the pleasure today to be joined by our Greenfins Awardee 2023 winner and a Greenfins Certified Gold member, Matt Reed, <laughs> joining us today. So 
Uh, my question for you, Matt, is as a gold member and awardee, what are the challenges in becoming a sustainable business? And how is Greenfins helping you achieve this or and your goals? Hi, everybody. Good good evening for, for us here. Good morning to those of you there. Uh, but, well, yeah, this is, I guess, probably one of the questions which comes up the most uh, uh, especially as Greenfins is, is growing and expanding, you know, quite quickly, as I understand. Um, and for us, I guess, we always had the ethos from the beginning that we wanted to be environmentally friendly and sustainable. So Greenfins kind of was just a, a, an obvious choice when we were asked, would we like to, to join in? Then, well, yeah, definitely it would be something um, we wanted to, to link up with. Um, but yeah, I guess because we had that ethos already, the challenges were maybe less because we wanted to go in that direction. Um, but I find initially um, the conversation that's been discussed already this evening um, that's on the forum about chemical products um, and those kind of things, it's definitely one which isn't in the forefront of everybody's mind so when we talk about sustainability in diving initially we talk about think about kicking the reef or not overfishing certain areas you know those are the, the obvious points and they're also obviously important but those things like um the stuff we use to clean the toilet or the rinse tanks or the boats um those are kind of tucked in the back and harder to solve like stop kicking the reef is relatively straightforward we can come back to that but you know it's the solution is obvious um the solution to what kind of chemicals you use to clean your boat and so on are less obvious um and green fins is definitely a, a great way to sort um dive centers in educating them on on what they can do as i say it's been discussed already that's up on the forum at the moment other things, one of the biggest challenges we've had in the Philippines in particular is disposing of, of used batteries. Everybody comes from wherever with all their AA batteries for their lights and everything like that, their cameras, and they think that they can just chuck them in the bin in the room or wherever at the end of the trip when their batteries are flat and then we'll take care of it. But it's interesting and we found out over the years that the philippines doesn't have a good way to recycle or dispose of those kind of things interestingly if you have like a car battery or bigger truck but that kind of stuff they have a system for that but they don't have systems really in place for um the smaller you know personal type batteries that people use in in diving and that's still something that's kind of ongoing and there's a topic on the forum about that also um, where somebody also recently actually suggested an idea some and actually it was the lady who came up with the idea originally was a green fins assessor who did her dive master at devolution um, and it was putting the batteries and we wrapped them up like little christmas gifts and then asked people if they would take them home with them bring them back to their country where they had a better system of recycling batteries and so on so that was yeah it came through entirely through green fins and it's up on the forum now and that was a, a great um solution to one of the, the big challenges that, that we have so um though yeah those are two examples from my mind of, of challenges that that kind of are tucked in the back like i say um encouraging people to stop kicking the reef or not wear gloves and not use pokey sticks to crawl along the bottom those kinds of challenges are constant um you know learning how to work with the customers and talk to them and maybe it's not always educating them it's just encouraging them um you know how they can be more sustainable and have less impact on the environment when they dive again green fins offers us a host of materials that we can stick up on the wall in a variety of different languages that we don't speak and we can just point at the picture that says no gloves and so on um there's e, e guides uh e class for dive guide sorry i look at the name exactly e courses. <laughs> that again, it, yeah that, that course is free and it helps work um especially for our local guys who you know don't even necessarily um, have great levels of English to communicate in 
Um, again, it gives them a, a very straightforward class on you know how to communicate certain things and so on. So those challenges are there, but yeah, the materials and the environment that Greenfins creates for us makes it significantly easier to overcome those challenges. <laughs> totally agree with you, Matt. And um, noted, I think we should put it on the solutions library to wrap up the batteries and <laughs> give them back to customers to their home countries. But um, having the community forum does uh, give you a sense of community. And, you know, um, we have a couple of responses about the stickers or the masking tape. Like, uh, we have a couple of comments that I have been diving for 30 years, but I haven't thought about the impact of a masking tape to our environment so so it's a it's a collective effort it's a collective knowledge that we are nurturing in the forum but matt um the, how does the for you how does the community forum facilitate knowledge and sharing and collaboration about um all, among all members new and old members yeah it's a good question i mean i think uh between emma and kathleen they they hit on the, the key elements there really like it's a it's a conversation space that didn't exist yeah, there's people there sharing ideas who we would never have been able to link up with before so that's definitely true it's completely global um like the addition of the digital membership on top of the other membership has obviously been able to expand the reach and then putting everybody together in one forum has really you know, opened up the the ideas and so on that can be shared there. Um, and again, it was, I think Chloe maybe mentioned how it's the conversation goes on. So it's not just, uh, you, you talk to somebody about how to get rid of batteries and then you don't see them again. And that's it. That thread is there. And if somebody comes up with a new idea, they put it in there and it can keep going on and on. So when somebody comes up with new ideas or new challenges of the same, same vein, then it's all there and it just keeps going and all the wealth of information is there for anybody to, to see. And I also, again, it was brought up about it being a safe space. Um, yeah, the way I would put that is that, you know, anybody who's there and who's looking at stuff and who's answering questions is there because they want to be and they have an interest. It's not Facebook where people want to, are there just to troll you and, and make it difficult. You know, pretty much guaranteed there's not anybody on the, the hub who doesn't want to be there. So it's all positive. Everybody's supporting each other. Um, and generally, we're all working towards the same thing. Right. So I think that's a, a hugely beneficial part of it is that, yeah, it, you can happily go on there and, and ask a question, which might seem stupid if you ask it on Facebook and you get trashed for. But nobody's going to do that on the hub. It's going to you're just going to get positive input so obviously that makes it more likely that people ask questions that um yeah they, they need help with so i think it's yeah. really really positive in that sense oh that's good to hear it also it's it's give, giving a sense that you are not alone in this challenge like sometimes like you you post a community for am, am, am i alone and then someone's gonna respond i i having the same challenge too so it's nice to have that sense of belongingness yeah. as well so thank you, Matt. Thank you, thank you. And we're so glad to have you here. Thank and you. also, uh, um, you're, you're active participation in the community forum as well. So I, I have seen your post and it's been really interesting to <laughs> read it all as a, as a person who doesn't have much diving experience yet. But yeah, I, we've, we've learning so much from all of our members all over the world. Thank you, Aaron. So I'll, um, I'll I'll jump in just just to do a shout out to anyone watching this um, this webinar. If you're a diving tourist and you like to visit beautiful locations around the world, suggest to the operator that you can take a handful of batteries back if you are from a place where there are recycling and safe disposal options for you. I always, for sure, I always do that. So let's let's all get into the habit of doing that ourselves as well. Um, so last but not least, we have Dr. Alex Brilski with us here, um, another trusted expert um, who we're very, very privileged to have in the community forum. Um, so, Alex, I'm going to jump in with a couple of questions for you. Um, you've got some very exciting things happening. Um, you've got some exciting things in the pipeline slash out there. Um, and I wanted to ask you, what do you believe the dive professionals must have in order to teach their students and customers to be environmental stewards themselves? <sighs> How long do we have? 
<laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think this all goes back to an, an issue I've been on the soapbox about for some time. And I think we have a disconnect between divers being interested, but not necessarily connected. And, and what I mean by that is that in the, in the training experience, we do a wonderful job of teaching people how to you know, do things properly in terms of safety and, and whatnot. But we, we really fall down in terms of really providing them with the insight about the environment. And that, that's no one's fault. It's just a, an artifact of the system in that the, the overwhelming emphasis in training is on skill development and relatively little on the environment. Now, there are some instructors who do a wonderful and extensive job in that regard, but that's not the norm. And so uh, divers get into the experience looking at all the pretty fish and, and, and you know, having a good time, but not necessarily with a connection to the environment. And so the, the first step is to re-examine our professional development process. And, and that's what I've done since my retirement from the College of Florida Keys in developing a course uh, to kind of fill that gap. That course takes me six days and eight dives to provide that, that knowledge base. Uh, but that's only the first step. Knowledge is one thing, but what we want to do is turn knowledge into action. And there's a there's a, a misconception, even among educators at all levels, that in order to affect action, we simply fill people's head with more information. And that's not true. We need to make the distinction between knowledge uh, in, in terms of giving them the, the, you know, the background and interpreting that knowledge in a way that's effective to change their education, which is why we put so much emphasis on environmental interpretation in my course. Uh, and so, you know, I, I'm the kind of person, I don't like people who complain who don't offer solutions. And my first solution, uh, as you well know, Chloe, was to create a resource for divers in terms of the knowledge. And that was my recent book, uh, Beneath the Blue Planet. Uh, but again, that's the knowledge part. It's not the interpretation part. And so I think we, we really need to re-examine the professional, the professional development process at its core and provide much more emphasis uh, in that regard. Uh, and again, we can talk for the rest of the day about that, that specifically. Uh, to that end, I've been, I've been teaching my, my EcoPro course for four years now, but I've only reached in that time about 100 professionals, and that's not going to move the needle. And most recently, I've uh, been able to hopefully solve part of that, at least, uh, in partnering with a, a, a US-based company here called Ocean First Education. And we're going to be launching next month a uh, online course in, uh, uh, <laughs> called the Sustainable Dive Leader, uh, which will enable anyone who has access to the internet to at least get the, the essence of many of these issues in terms of sustainability. And it's important that that message be broadened beyond the dive community in understanding what exactly is sustainability, how is it being incorporated in the tourism sector for in the, in the blue economy experience, uh, talk about uh, issues in terms of how do you market it, not only implement it, but how do you market it? And generally, you know, give a, a bigger picture view of how this issue should not be a supplement, but the core emphasis in the diver training experience. And so I guess I would say we have a lot of work to do, mm -hmm. uh, but they're really, particularly with green fins, there's no reason to go out and recreate the wheel. Uh, the material is there and that really that's really been brought home with the forum I, I really think that's been the case it, what's, what struck me with the forum so far is not the, not the the trends but the fact that there's been such a wide diversity and I think that's probably to be expected because I think there's been this huge desire for information 
that finally there's an avenue to have those questions answered. But the important thing uh, is, and, and, and I reflected on this uh, based on the results from the Reef World Sustainability uh, Survey, which is a seminal document if you've not gone through that survey. And one of the, one of the conclusions from that survey is that divers want to do the right thing, but they just weren't sh sure where to get the information. And equally important, they weren't assured of the, of the credibility of the information. And then with the, the hub, that, that problem is solved because you have this central location that is you know, reasonably assured of being valid and, and up to date, et cetera. So I think that's really been the, to me, the biggest benefit. Uh, and ju just one example, I was in a discussion with a, a Caribbean based operator who was asking about how to, you know, what would be the best approach in monitoring their coral reefs. And we, we got into a, a, you know, an exchange initially, and it turned out one of the other forum members who actually was in the same location, made him aware of the fact that, hey, we already have a national uh, assessment process. And, you know, it was amazing. These people who are you know, within 10 minutes driving distance uh, did not have that connection except for the, uh, their interaction with the, with the forum. So I, I think of the hub rather. And I, so I think it's gonna be a tremendously valuable tool, uh, you know, incalculable. Thank you. Yeah, it's fascinating. And I think um, you, you, you pointed to the sustainability survey that we did last year. And one of the big things that that highlighted was that tourists certainly want sustainability and they want more education, environmental education when they're on holiday. Yet when you look at the uptake of environmental courses, they're pretty low. And um, chatting with uh, Jean-Claude Moncheron over at SSI, another training agency, and, and he, he has quite a clear story to that in that there's a lack of confidence within the diving profession to, to teach these classes, to teach these different environmental courses when they actually could be a great marketing tool. Um, but they people just don't feel that confident to actually teach them. And that if we can build that capability within the industry and actually lead with environmental and sustainability, instead of it being an add-on, and this is something that I'm talking with Emma about all the time at, at Paddy, um, sustainability and environmental content always seems to be an add-on. And I think it needs to be core first and foremost when you enter the diving industry. And so I think that that from a professional point of view should also be the same. And I know that Alex shares my life mission in terms of our dream of having more professional opportunities for diving industry professionals um, to learn more about how to set up a sustainable business, where to choose, you know, from the beginning, where should we be looking to select to build our, our business? How do we set up a sustainable business and how do we really double down on the marketing and the opportunities, um, you know, reaching that, that market share, which is huge in terms of the sustainable tourist, but doing it in a way that's really meaningful to the local community as well as your triple bottom line as well. Um, so, yeah, I think keep an eye on this course that's coming out from Ocean First Institute, is it Alex or Education Ocean First? Ocean, there, there is an Ocean First Institute oh. and there's Ocean First Education. The education group is in that business and has been for some time. So it will be released through the education uh, entity. Sustainable Dive Leader. And, and how would the, the how would we access that course once it's launched? Uh, you'll, you'll be seeing news releases, et cetera, but it's, uh, and it's a, it's a uh, their, their, element, their learning management system has been, uh, uh, you know, well established, and it'll be pretty easy to uh, get into information and access to the program globally. Okay, okay, brilliant. I'm I'm on tenterhooks. I'm very pleased to have had a sneak peek into the content of the course. I, we do um, apologize initially; it's going to be North American focused, but we're working on that right now to broaden the global perspective. But still, eighty-five percent of the course is applicable anywhere in the world. Okay, brilliant. Okay, well, um, thank you, Alex. You've actually you covered my two questions in one question there. So thank you very much. <laughs> I'm talking about the trends slash diversity of conversations that are happening in the in the forum as well. Um, so I'm going to hand batting it back over to Erin now. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. That was really uh, insightful. That I wish we could go on, <laughs> but. Um, 
Uh, we had really a lot of questions from our audience, and I think it's time to uh, pick our brains out for the questions that um, the audience has committed. So if you have, you can submit your questions to the chat box for those who are streaming live, and we'll do our best to cover as many yeah, queries as possible within the time frame. And also panelists, if you have other questions, or you can ask your fellow uh, panelists if you have any questions. So uh, first off, um, this might be directed to... Uh, green fans for ours. There's a question from Michelle. Is the platform private or public? So currently, the Green Fins Hub is private, which is exclusive to diving operators uh, all over the world. This is to uh, encourage a safe space for operators uh, for the community forum and to help them track their sustainable uh, action plans. Uh, if you are a diving operator, or uh, working for a diving operator, uh, if you want to be a Greenfins member, you can go to greenfins.net uh, hashtag register and you can find uh, the membership options that will be suitable for you. So we have certified and digital membership. You can find more about that in the website. Um, next, uh, I think this is for Chloe. Um, does Greenfins network? Uh, does Greenfins work directly with tourism boards or departments of each country to help members follow specific country rules? This is from Mohammed Nassim. Hey, uh, Mohammed Nassim, thank you very much for your question. Um, so yes and no. Um, so Greenfins um, is a management approach that can be adopted by any government entity around the world. Most commonly, we work with the environment ministries um, and often we've worked with the tourism ministries as well with much success. So when a government um, identifies Greenfins as an approach that is applicable to um, building the sustainability of their industry, and um, they will then build what we call a national team and they'll do that in partnership with the Reef World Foundation and we'll build national capacity to go out and do these environmental assessments of, of dive operators to be able to activate them as certified members of which we have Matt here who's who's a certified member number one in the whole world um, so through that we often do work with tourism boards if we're working with the ministries of tourism to be able to help promote membership so there's some fantastic incentives that some of our Greenfins active countries have embarked on, such as offering Greenfins dive operators reduced rates at the booths at dive shows, for example, or listing them on the country's tourism board's websites. Um, so we can work directly with tourism boards in Greenfins active countries. And in non-active countries, we also do work with tourism boards in terms of promoting any members that might be there. So digital membership is very new. Um, it's only just been launched uh, very recently but membership is growing very quickly so um, in those countries where Greenfins is not active there could be a great opportunity to work with the tourism boards to help elevate Greenfins digital membership as well so get in contact with us if you're a tourism board and let's see if how we can work together yes let's go <laughs> um, uh, next question is uh, feel free any of the panelists to answer this question um, from Mohammed Nasim again, do you guys believe that picking up a straw and changing to safe sunscreen will save the reefs? So, anyone from our panelists who would like to answer the question? Erin, uh, your internet just dropped out for me just then. I don't know if it did for everyone, just a tiny bit. Could you just repeat oh, the question just sorry. in case? All right. Um, uh, Mohammed Nasim asks, do you guys believe picking up a straw and changing to reef safe sunscreen will save the reefs around? So does any, question. Any, any one of our panelists would like to answer that question? I can give it a go <laughs> or Alex. Um, I think it's our, it's our lifestyle change and what we do. So one single action might not be impactful for the whole Asian, but if we collectively, if everybody save the straw or, you know, um, everybody, then we, we have a, a much larger volume and also awareness. So I think education and awareness and, and changing those actions to be more sustainable. Um, it's not just the, the single action itself that actually builds awareness of what we, you know, what we are capable to do to be more sustainable in, in, in everyday life. Thank you, Kathleen. Oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Go ahead, um, Dr. Alex. 
Yeah, uh, it, it may seem, and, and realistically, picking up a straw is a pretty minuscule attempt, but keep in mind the attitude that someone has to, to take that action. That's, that's very important. And equally, someone who sees that person pick up that straw, that is a spark for a potential change in attitude as well. So don't ever think that even the most minor uh, you know, action is, is useless, that, that, that it, it's, it's important. And uh, it can be extremely easy to become frustrated. <laughs> Believe me, I, I was a diver when the call was for pristine, even in 20 miles from here. Uh, but I haven't lost hope that, that we can change that, and we can only change that through attitude change. Exactly. Thank you, Dr. Alex. Um, we have a lot of questions here. So um, this is for uh, Margarita. How can you see the Community Forum assisting with citizen science in the future? Do we have, uh, do, does the Community Forum has a potential in collecting citizen science from all over the world? Yes, I do think that the forum will help in activating citizen science as well as connecting them with each other. So it's not just a place to gather information um, for data monitoring, but also allow them to learn how citizen science is being done. It also encourages, you know, uh, active participation in sustainability itself. So by learning the best practices from another area, you can you are encouraged to see how it can be applied in this other sphere. Yes, and yeah, go ahead, Dr. Alex. Could I also bring up the, the, the marketing implications of citizen science? Because it, it can be a very valuable tool uh, and a very unique tool because unlike most of the courses dive operators provide, which are, of course, there to educate, but also to, to derive income, when you teach a citizen science course, you're, you're portraying a very different attitude. It's, it's, it's like this, is, this isn't just money, this is actually giving back. And so that, provi that provides a very different perspective and attitude toward uh, the operator. So there are enormous advantages from a marketing perspective, which is why I, I talk quite a bit about citizen science and volunteerism, which is an equally important component. So by all means, we need to continue to pursue this uh, in, in all aspects of, of marine tourism. Yes, exactly. And um, currently we are gathering insights because uh, with a coral bleaching and El, El Nino that's happening worldwide. So we're gathering in the community forum right now. Uh, if you have any reports uh, for coral bleaching, um, we'll put it down later in the comments where you can report it. So uh, next one is uh, Matt. Can I, um... uh, go ahead, oh. Emma. Sorry, can I jump in yeah just on the topic of citizen science just to plug about aware week is coming up obviously paddy aware foundation citizen science is such a massive thing um, alongside our courses um, and our policy work so aware week's coming up in september and the big focus is going to be about um the relaunch of the aware specialty which is going to look much more at things like citizen science and what you can do as an individual to take action um, under paddy's blueprint for ocean action they five big goal areas that we're working on marine debris shark and ray conservation new marine protected areas uh climate change so things like blue carbon restoration and coral conservation and restoration so right now you probably know we have the dive against debris database which is the world's largest database of um marine debris is what it says on the tin um but we're also launching the global shark and ray sensor really soon so that means divers all over the world will be able to report the shark and ray sightings um, whether that's pictures or just reports of what you've seen and that's going to build up with this global snapshot that's really going to help um, researchers do so much more than what they can currently do with more limited resources and as divers we're in such a um, unique position to be able to help them with that sort of thing and the the goal in the long run is to have a system and science component for each of those goal areas so you may have heard of adopt the blue i know some people have it's the other major component of being a paddy eco center alongside green fins membership and and performance within your 
operations. So that's all about putting your local dive sites on the map, sharing with Paddy Aware what those ecosystems are, what the challenges are, and that really helps the Paddy Aware team to identify in-country destinations where Paddy Aware can come in and help push and advocate for policy change and make a real difference and really back up local dive businesses um, on a local level with the global force of of Paddy Aware and the three decades of success at the policy table. So when you're a diver and you're getting involved in citizen science and you're reporting data back to a database, it really does have a, a genuine impact on change that only you as a diver can can contribute. So I just wanted to push that a bit more and just reiterate that to people. It's really useful um, because I think a lot of dive centres, um, they don't really know what monitoring to do and how to get involved in monitoring when it's such an easy part, the, a thing that you can slip into everyday business practices. So I think, yeah, definitely heading over to Paddy Aware and learning more about the monitoring opportunities that they have there um, and, and how those are really informing change um, around the world. So thanks for flagging that, Emma. Thank you, Emma and Chloe. Um, for Matt, we have a question here from one of our uh, members. As a Greenfins uh, Certified Gold member, uh, what other discussions would do you want to see uh, in the community forum or, um, you know, topics that would be beneficial for all the members? I think we're going to pick on someone, surely. <laughs> Matt, oh, no, it's, come on, Matt. It's just, it's just the Philippines <laughs> internet. <laughs> oh, is it, oh, is he still? Oh, oh yes, he has. Sorry, I thought it was just yeah, he's stuck. He's <laughs> stuck. It's okay, <laughs> Matt. Come back to us. Uh, maybe Kathleen can. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Oh, ah, you're back. Here. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I completely missed the question, though. It was <laughs> gone. So if you want to pick me up, it's fine, too. Is all right. Um, there's there's a question from one of our members. Um, what other interesting topics or um discussions do you um uh, see in the community forum that you would like to see more in the community forum? Oh, that's a very tough question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's similar to my comments about the like cleaning products and batteries the stuff that's kind of hidden a little bit right obviously there's a number of topics that are, are blindingly obvious that everybody wants to talk about and can talk about but yeah i think there's maybe stuff like the good example is the the tape for the nitrox stickers and that right where yeah it's like oh i never thought of that yeah i've written a million nitrox labels over the years and never really thought about the impact that that was having so yeah without having any Specific examples jump to mind. I think um, those are the ones that will you know, kind of grow the hub to be more complete and so on, you know, where it's stuff that everyone goes, oh, yeah, we didn't think about that. That's now become a, something conscious to us um, rather than the ones that everybody yeah, already knows about, right? So I guess that for me would be um, a big addition, yeah, the, the stuff where it's it's hidden in the background. Just bring it to the forefront and make it even more obvious to people. Yeah. And I think uh, only time can tell. Uh, these conversations, these topics will just grow in the community forum one by one. And it's, 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 it's really exciting to see that. And of course, um, come up with solutions, tangible solutions for everybody uh, to use and benefit from. I agree. I agree. Super interesting. Um, I just wanted to add before we jump onto the next section um, that there's been a couple of questions from people about how different people can get involved in Greenfins. Um, so the community for well, the, the Greenfins hub has been designed by a mastermind, a digital mastermind here at the Reef World Foundation, James Greenhalgh. Um, and he has really developed the forum with such a long standing thought process behind this. So um, any staff member who works at any Greenfins operation can create their own personal account on the Greenfins 
Operations Hub. And then they can be invited as a team member to join their operations profile on the hub. And then they can access the forum. So if you work at a Greenfin's dive operator, you can have access to all of this automatically. And so then that link, that account can then be linked and unlinked from the Greenfin's operation. So if you move on to a different dive operator, we're quite a transient industry, the diving industry. So as you move on to another dive operator, you can then link to their Greenfin's account and start contributing again um, to helping that dive operator to um, reach or to fulfill their sustainability action plan, but also get communicating in the forum as well. So basically, if you're a diving professional, encourage your dive center to sign up as a Greenfin's member and you'll have access to all these things that we've been talking about today. There's also the Greenfin's Dive Guide e-course that if you're a freelance instructor and you're not literally, you're not linked to a, a dive center, you can become, um, you can do that Greenfin's Dive Guide e-course, um, which will give you loads of information about it. Um, and then as a Greenfin's assessor, that would be only in um, Greenfin's active countries. So have a look online and see if there is a Greenfin's active country. If you're not working in the diving industry, there might be a way for you to get involved in some way. So, so reach out to us. Um, will Greenfin's be at DEMA? Just very quickly, Erin, before we jump on. Yes, Greenfin's, the Reef World Foundation, the entity behind Greenfin's will be at DEMA and we will be running some sustainable diving events. So watch this space. Yeah, see you there at Dima. Um, as much as you want to answer all of the questions, unfortunately, um, we're limited with time. But this has been really an insightful discussion and a really, really great, uh, it's a really pre uh, pleasurable time to spend with you. But we have reached the end. <laughs> but before we wrap up, we want to express our sincere gratitude to all of our esteemed panelists for joining us today and your knowledge, insights, and thanks diverse perspectives has truly made us look into different lenses. We appreciate your time and effort that you have dedicated to spend with us today. But before we say goodbye to our audience, can you please um, share a one-sentence summary <laughs> or takeaway to our viewers? Just a short summary or <laughs> takeaway to our viewers. Um, let's start with Emma. Um, what kind of summary do you want me to give? Like, of... And the whole conversation. Yeah. Some of the like whole thing in one sentence. A call, a call to action from our oh, audience. Oh gosh. Yeah. Call to okay. <laughs> well, I just need to plug Eco Center for any for anyone that doesn't know what Eco Center is already. You can go to paddy.com forward slash Eco Center and learn more about it. Whether you're a dive center owner that's been involved in the diving industry for uh, years and years and years, or you're just getting into snorkeling, even. Um, Eco Center is relevant to you. Get involved, make sustainable dive tourism a real conservation solution rather than something that um, has negative consequences. So that's what I'd love for you to do. Thanks. And thanks for hosting this, guys. It's been great to yeah. meet all of you guys. Thank you, Emma. Uh, Kathleen? As a, um, as a dive center, uh, owner and uh, the message here is really quite clear that if you're a dive center and you really um, focus on sustainability is really to get involved with um, the community and green fins has a lot of opportunities here um, and put the sustainable practices in place um, first in, you know in the forefront um, along with safety and work hand in hand in the community. And you'll find that you know, the, the blue economy is very um, uh, effective. All right, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. And looking forward to uh, engage with you more in the forum. <laughs> uh, Matt? Uh, my main takeaways would be if you're a dive professional, um, kind of what Alex said, you should be educating yourself more, more, whether that's through courses like Alex offers or through the hub, finding out more about what you can do as a dive professional to um, improve your impact. And if you're a customer, then you should be demanding that your operator is taking steps because most of the stuff is free, right? That's one of the great things with Greenfins. It's basically free and the steps that we take don't cost us anything. So why every dive snorkel operator isn't using it. it should be a question that customers are asking 
Yes, thank you, Matt, and thank you for being our one of our best pioneers, uh, way way back, way way back since we just, uh, Margarita. My my pleasure. My pleasure. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so thank you for inviting you, Nepkovsi, in this activity. So um, as mentioned earlier, it's been, I think, 20 years now, or at least almost 20 years, where Greenfins has started just from a small area in Thailand with Kovsi. So I'm very happy to see how it, it has evolved um, in multiple countries, which is a testament on how impactful Greenfins, Greenfins effort is. And um, I look, and now you're in digital form. So I look forward to 20 more years and so <laughs> for Greenfins being all around the world. Uh, thank you. And Kavsi has been there, right, Chloe? <laughs> like our biggest supporter. <laughs> Definitely. We've had 23 years of partnership with Kavsi and we launched Greenfins wow. 20 years ago next year. So yes, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Dr. Alex. Uh <laughs> To, to accomplish all of this, this always gets back to attitude and, and, and behavior. And rather than my words, uh, the author, Maya Angelou, once said, if I get this right, people will forget what I tell them and they'll forget what I show them, but they'll never forget how I make them feel. And if you're a dive professional, please keep that in mind because we have a, an, an, an incredible opportunity and a critical need to really connect people with the environment more so than any other component. And I, I really think that's, uh, that's critical. I used to always conclude my instructor training by saying that an, a scuba instructor has more opportunity to change attitude than any marine biologist on the face of the planet, except Jacques Cousteau. I, I should say Sylvia Earle now, but I, I sincerely believe that. This is a, an important mission as dive professionals that we, we can undertake and we need to do a good job. Thank you, Dr. Alex. And we truly appreciate you as one of our uh, trusted experts in the community forum. The members ha have been learning so much from you. And of course, uh, thank you, Chloe, for moderating this discussion and for your guidance and facilitating such an interactive discussion. Uh, Chloe, do you have final remarks? Uh, for I want to say a big shout out to you, Erin, for your wonderful management of our community forum. Everything that you see unfolding in the community forum is a result of Erin. Um, so, yeah, thank you to you for your dedication and hard work and for making today possible. Thank you. And to our wonderful panelists as well. Yeah, it's a it's a collective effort. It's it's a team effort. So we shout out to Paddy and the Green Fence team for making this all happen. So, um. Uh, be before we end the webinar, uh, thank you, thank you so much, panelists and Chloe, uh, for your time. Uh, we are so excited to announce that the Greenfin's Dive Guide and Diver eCourse has recently got an update. So there are completely exciting new sections added to the courses. For those of you who have not heard about the courses, the Greenfin's Dive Guide eCourse is the only environmentally accredited course available for dive professionals. It is free to take with the option of paying $25 for a personal certificate. And so there's two e-courses. That one was a dive guide e-course. This one, next one, is the Greenfin's Diver e-course, especially designed for recreational divers to help protect coral reefs by learning how to conduct more environmentally friendly dives. The cost only is $25, but once completed, uh, you will receive a personal certificate, which is a... Uh, valid for two years. All proceeds goes to the supporting the vital work and protecting the marine environment. Both courses are developed by Reef Road with the support of the United Nations Environment Program. And for those who cannot afford the courses, uh, scholarships are available too. So you can go ahead and go to the links on the screen to access the resources, uh, courses, and for more information. Last opportunity, if you are uh, passionate about marine conservation and committed to make a positive impact on our oceans, we have an exciting opportunity for you. Uh, the Greenfins Community Forum is looking for trusted experts, such as the trusted experts we have today, uh, to join our vibrant community. So we are seeking for individuals who possess who possesses deep expertise in marine conservation, sustainable tourism, uh, marine ecosystems such as seagrass beds, mangroves, uh, policies as well, and or any re related fields. 
So as a trusted expert, you will have the opportunity to engage with fellow professionals, share your knowledge and insights, and collaborate, and collaborate on innovative solutions to safeguard our oceans. And of course, and access to our members all over the world. Uh, all good things comes to an end, uh, but we have come to the end of our webinar and we want to take a moment to express all of our heartfelt appreciation to everyone, to all of you who has tuned in on our Facebook and LinkedIn pages and for joining us today. And of course, to Paddy for co-hosting this webinar. To follow Reef Roads and Greenfin's work, you can visit our website at greenfins.net and social media. So we are all around world, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or you can send us an email if you're interested to be, to be a member at info at, at greenfins.net. And of course, fo follow Paddy's work on socials at Paddy and Paddy Aware. Again, this is Arian, and thank you so much for being with us today. We'll leave you with the Greenfins Code of Conduct video to end today's webinar. See you in the next one. Green Fins is a UN Environment Programme initiative spearheaded globally by the Reef World Foundation. The Green Fins Code of Conduct provides the only internationally recognized environmental standards to stop the environmental impact from marine tourism activities. By adopting green fins, an operation becomes an advocate for environmentally positive practices. Displaying green fins membership materials promotes best practice and helps tourists identify environmentally responsible operators. Customers are likely to copy the actions of their instructors and guides. Always follow the green fins environmental tips to promote positive behavior from guests. Participating in cleanups helps to preserve the marine environment where you work. This also helps raise awareness about the threats of marine debris and creates change on a larger scale. Always use mooring buoys and when allowed, support in installing and maintaining. When moorings are not available, use drift or hand place anchors to avoid damaging the marine environment. Never drop an anchor on live coral, seagrass, or other marine life. The sale or display of marine life encourages harvesting of important species. If there is less demand, then less marine life will be removed from the ocean. Every shell plays a role. Marine monitoring is an excellent way to learn more about marine life in your local area. The data collected can help protect the marine environment and educate others. Providing suitable bins and ashtrays prevents trash from entering the ocean where it can harm marine life. Make sure all trash is segregated, disposed responsibly and recycled where possible. Take steps to prevent toxic cleaning products, sunscreens, engine oil and other hazardous chemical waste from entering the water. Replace products with eco-friendly options where possible. Environmental laws were developed for the protection and conservation of marine life. Make sure to follow and keep up to date with the rules and penalties that apply in your area. Always inform guests about best environmental practice every time before going in the water to encourage responsible behavior when out on dive and snorkel trips. Staff and guests are more likely to follow environmental standards and improve the sustainability of your operation if they're given adequate training. Greenfin's e-courses are available to help with this. Providing these materials is an engaging way to educate divers and get them invested in preserving your local marine life.
help to educate guests about where local marine protected areas are and why they are important. Contact with marine life and coral can stress, damage or even kill them. Promote a strict no-touch policy to avoid contact with the marine environment. Find out more about green fins on the website and social media.